On November 14, 1997, Rena Verk, a troubled 14-year-old outcast searching for acceptance, was invited by a friend to a party. They met behind Shoreline Middle School in Saanich, and from there a group of at least eight girls and one guy, all under 16 years of age, walked to Craigflower Bridge. There they swarmed Verk, burning her with cigarette butts and repeatedly kicking her, allegedly for spreading rumors about them. An autopsy would later reveal her head injuries alone would have probably killed her, but officially she died of drowning. And we believe that there were other kids in that area. It's a popular hangout. As far as how many kids have first-hand knowledge of what actually took place, we are still going with those eight for now. However, again, there could be more. Virk's death revealed an ugliness in BC teenage society that few understood. There was possibly a racist element and certainly a new savagery among our youth because all but one of the perpetrators were girls. And it didn't seem this way when I was growing up. And now out there, um, I, just want, I just want to warn them that, uh, that don't let this happen to you. I see lots of girls in school picking fights on each other. Everybody knew that she got beat up. Nobody knew that she was dead. Virk's body floated for a week before finally being discovered. Three girls would plead guilty to assault causing bodily harm and three others were convicted of the same offense. The trial would hear how after the first meeting, Kelly Ellard and Warren Glowatsky went back to the bridge and drowned Virk. Both would be convicted of second degree murder, only Glowatsky would later express remorse. I've been able to realize the hurt that I've done to people. He testified that he stood and watched as this other individual alone dragged Rena into waist deep water of the gorge, held her head under the surface of the water until she drowned. Glowatsky was fully paroled by 2010, but Allert, who changed her name to Carrie Sim, was more defiant in prison, taking illegal drugs, repeatedly claiming her innocence, gave birth to a child in 2016, and by 2020, now in her late 30s, had a second child. She is now receiving day parole. The Virk family, after years of grief, finally forgave those who they believed showed true remorse. I would say I felt compassion for them as young people. The Rena Virk story inspired several books, academic theses, and documentaries. Rena's parents would launch an anti-bullying campaign and bring teenage violence to the forefront of public debate. Ted Chernacki, Global News.